Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I have my phones? Who has them? Praise God. Let's appreciate all of them. Kemi just came back from the U.S. I think he just came from the U.S. Kemi is here. From Nothing Baby, she's resumed. Let me say hi to the people. Is it, it's kind of warm, right? Wow, but that praise and worship are also very energetic though. Well, praise the Lord. Um, you know that March is the hottest month of the year in Nigeria. You may not know that, but you know, haven't passed it for a while. In March, we always have hit, but of course, we're going to be able to do that. I love the new auditorium. Do you like it? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. One of the things you can do that can really help is spreading the message. If this message blessed you, it's always on YouTube. Go share something. Yeah, you know, and it's a lot of you do wonderful things. You write like this someone excerpt and you copy me. I love it. In addition to that, also write your experiences. You know why? When your friends see you post like, this message changed my life, it opened my eyes. They are wondering, let me go and watch the message. And always put the link there for them to watch. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. We had some, did I give you some an assignment last week? Or no assignment last week? No assignment. Okay, because I'm going to give you double assignments this week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Firstly, your first assignment, I think you should go and watch the service that I preached, the message I preached in the third service. Yeah, I think everyone needs it. It was almost like a two or three in one message. I spent the first 10 minutes talking about discouragement, which I can't talk about again right now, but I can talk about one thing about discouragement. Every time you feel discouraged, you must, let me say it this way, you must have a way to resolve discouragement why you will be discouraged there's no human being that will not be discouraged so you must have a system that helps you what fix discouragement so that if it comes it's not a state it's just something that happens and you move on and one of the things that helps you fix discouragement is this one of the ways you can fix discouragement is to ask yourself questions one of them is that Am I judging too soon? Yeah. So for example, all of you that are married right now, knew there was a time you dated someone that you broke up with the person and you thought that that was the worst. Yes or no? Was that too soon? Yes. Exactly. Some of you, even single people would say it was too soon. You know, let me say it this other way, you would, that's fine. How many of you had an extra semester in school or you wrote jam twice? Hands up. Everybody raise up your hands because one of them must have happened to you. At least most people raise up your hands. I want to ask you, when you didn't make SSC at once or they are like, they say there's NECO, all these new exams, we did WAEC. Yeah. There's WAEC, there's SSC, then they changed to SSC, then there was GC. Is there CGC? Yes. There's CGC. Yes. Oh, wow. I thought they've canceled all those things. But they said there's the new one, NECO, and all of these things. What? NECO. Not when I was in school. <laughs> For those of you that are younger, you know. So the question is this. When you failed, maybe you failed, you didn't have English or maths or one of subjects, or you did... Um, what that thing you did jam twice then they introduced post jam yeah post jam then did you did you have those issues at any point did you think your life was over because of those issues were you judging too soon sometimes you judge too soon so sometimes the reason why you're discouraged is because you judge too soon just too soon. You had the breakup and you feel as if nobody will love me again. But you're married now. I remember I was talking about my wife. 
my wife had an extra year in the university. I'm not even sure we're dating that time. You know, she had an extra year in university. And because of that, she wanted to leave the extra year and go back and start afresh from another school. She was so discouraged. She said, how can she have an extra year? And I was laughing because right now, it doesn't matter. So the question is that, are you judging too soon? In the next five years, would this matter? It won't. So when you're discouraged, you need to ask yourself, am I judging what? Too soon. Very powerful question. But for the full message, you need to, you know, you need to learn. Then the way you get over your discouragement is by asking yourself, what did I learn? So you need to ask yourself, what are my lessons? Lessons makes pain bearable. Lessons makes pain bearable. If there are no lessons, it will be difficult to accept your pain. Lessons makes pain bearable. I, I wanted Vicky to speak in the second service, but she turned out to be in the fourth service. You know, Vicky, when you're a female, when they say do this, oh yes, pastor, I'm going to come for the second service. That's you, what you do. Look at, the, look at the lady next to you. <laughs> What's that? Are you, when are you going to grow in your femininity? Mm -mm, me. What is it? We should talk about this after. Give her the microphone. Yeah, so when, when do you hope to grow in your femininity? That's a feminine voice. That's nice. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, trying now. Yeah. I said that I did speak to Pastor Mo some time ago. I told her that when I finally get married, I'll come to her locker and take some notes on her dressing. And then she said, why wait till you're married? I said, fair question. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm working on it. It's... Uh, I, I, <laughs> I love the fact that you're I'm working on it. I'm wearing earrings now, so that's good. I'm wearing earrings. That, that's massive advancement, you know. Yeah, 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 the way I did my hair. So you did your hair? Yeah, you can see. It's what, not, what's that? It's not rascal anymore. It's not. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying. No, 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 no. Sincerely, I think you're trying. Because at least you're wearing your rings and making your hair. But the next question is this. This is the next question. Do you want a massive change? Um, no, in not in this in your relationship and marital area, you want a massive change. You want something to, you know, do you want like get married this year, next year? Is that something you want? Well, uh, to be honest, the, the plan was next year. I'm not desperate. Next year. Yeah, so, next year. So, so that next year is a massive change. Massive change requires massive action. The changes you're making are good, but they are not massive. Okay. So if I invest 100,000 100, here, it's different from if I invest 100 million. Uh -huh. So, if you want to get married, which is a massive thing you want, then there must be massive changes. A lot of you change, but your change is too little for what you want. Yeah. It's too, it's too tiny. So, the investment is too small for the outcome you want. You need to think about it in a very different way. Just imagine massive changes will lead to massive results. So, yeah. So, the thing is that you're still rude. But you've reduced, you were rude 150%. <clears throat> but you've reduced to 130. You said, but I've changed. But that change is not sufficient for the breakthrough you want. So you need to ask, it's just like, you're like some of you that want to lose weight. Depending on the amount of weight you want to lose, you know, if you really want to lose weight, there's going to be, if it's massive, it's going to be massive. You See, if you go to the gym once in a month, after one year, you can lose one kg one year but if you want to really lose weight you must up it some more exactly so massive change it goes to massive results praise God yeah all right so we're trying to talk to Vicky right okay but don't worry because of our time so we've been talking about dealing with relationship frustration so in this service we've said of our love what how, my question is how are you going to change 
That's what we'll talk about in this service. So that's what I want to start, about, start for the next one or two weeks. Howard. So we'll talk about relationship frustrations and, and you know. Yeah. How is the lady from last week? What's her name? Mutumaria. Is she here? Mutumaria, are you here? Wave. Stand. She's not? Maybe she's still coming. So, okay, please, if you know her, she needs to come. And the reason why is that one service is great, but you must remember that what was wrong with you for 25 years to be fixed in one service is difficult. So you can, a change can stand in, a, in one service. You need to, the word is, you need to make it permanent through a series of interventions. So that's something that happens with you. They get one message and they run, and that's too small. So like, like you hear the service right now, you need to go back. Like the, I did a huge series on, in October and relationship. You need to go back, listen, 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 and listen again. All right, Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs. So dealing with relationship and marital frustration. So all of you that... So this service last month and this month, we're dedicating to helping people that are dealing with some kind... Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so this teaching, we're trying to help people that are dealing with some kind of either relationship frustration or marital frustration. You're dealing with some kind of relationship frustration or marital frustration. All of the people at the back are clustered at the door. You're confusing me. Um, if there's any staff there, are the staff there? Um, yeah, they just need to help me make sure that we can do that. Do me a favor. Um, Trooper, come. Praise God. All right. So, let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 24. So, in this service, so we've, so why, let me just rephrase. Let me see if you guys are catching up. Why is it important to break your marital, your state of marital frustration or your state of relationship? For, why is it important? Anybody that wants to tell me the reason why? Let's do a recap. Anybody here? I can't remember. Is a good answer? You're a bad teacher. Okay. What? The reason why is that if I'm a good teacher, you should tell me I'm a good teacher by telling me what I taught. Yeah. So, anybody, raise up your hands. Yes, thank you, sir. Give, it to, give the microphone to him. It's important to deal with um, relationship frustrations because you can't move forward with the hearts, with the baggages from the past. Um, okay, that's, that's one. great. That's a good one. Number two, another person. There's one particular answer I'm looking for. Yes, another person. Yeah. Maybe we should go back to last week. Um, number two, you, you. No, no let, let me let someone else answer. Yeah. Yes, this lady over here. We need two microphones. Yeah, it's just so you need to be somewhere. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell me. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. It's important to deal with relationship frustration so that you can move to a state of peace. Yeah. Why is it good to move to a state of peace? Because what you focus on is what you are. You see. What you experience. Yeah. yeah. Because the life you focus on is the life you experience. That's what you're trying to say. So the reason why it's good to deal with relationship frustration, please pay attention, is this. The most powerful example is what you experienced last week where I give the example of the guy that had a bad day at job, that at work, they queried him, they insulted him, he got home, and his cousin that was with the mom broke a plate. So let me go back to it again. Let me just, let's just say it to it. I said, just imagine <clears throat> that this guy called John. So John, that day at work, it was a Friday. His boss called him at 3 o'clock and warned him that they're going to sack him very soon. At 5 p.m., he realized that he had made a mistake and the company had lost 50 million. And his boss just said, we will discuss this year. You will discuss this nasty and stupid mistake of yours on Monday. That was the last minute he got. As he was coming home, he met his younger, his, his cousin with the mom that was staying with him for the weekend. The cousin broke the plate. What would his reaction be? His reaction would be like mad, crazy, all of those kind of things. The reason why is that the state he was in next same guy the next monday 
um, another occasion um, he just made a hundred million for the business he just made a hundred million for the business 3 p.m the boss called him and said he's the best staff in the entire 1000 staff they have 5 p.m they sent me a promotion letter and they sent him to expect an official car as he gets home the same cousin breaks the same place again what does he does he get angry no why because a state determines what 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 does the state a state determines his response so if you're frustrated your frustration will determine what your response it will determine how you interpret things and it will determine what your response so sometimes it's not as if something is wrong it's your state that determines your response so when you think that the girl is nasty maybe it's your state that feels that way when you feel as if maybe the guy is rude is your state that feels that way so one of the best things you have to do is that before i conclude you need to say that is this really my state or it's a reality glory to god yeah i mean i've seen all sorts i've seen all sorts for example sometimes you get home and if you're married your wife did not cook you understand sometimes you don't understand what's the difference your state it's the state of where you're coming from so sometimes it's good to step back and be like, okay, how do I look at this thing? This seems to be a bad experience. So the reason why I want to deal with frustration is that if you're in a frustrated state, you will see everything through that lens. You would attract frustration and it will be a challenge all around. What do you think? Tell me what you're learning. Tell me. Tell me what you're learning. Okay, give, give it to the lady with the gold hair. Yeah, yeah, Yolanda, yeah, give it to her. Some more to learn. Uh, good afternoon, church. I'm learning that you have to make a conscious, intentional effort to make changes. If not, you would not attract good things moving forward and you wouldn't get the better reaction. So, so when in your life were you in the terrible state and you had terrible, terrible things? When I was younger. You want to tell a story? You don't have to tell us the details, but you can give us a random story. There was a time when I felt like I wanted to do a lot of things and I felt that I was probably being trapped in a way where I wasn't able to express myself as much as I would like to express myself. So in those situations, my reaction was mostly because of what I was... Like Good. My I love the story. My environment. Watch this now. So because of these things she wanted to do and she couldn't do, how did you feel about your parents? I felt like they didn't love me. Did you see that? Because of our state. See how it translates there. So, what am I saying to you? When you are in a frustrated state, you can see people that love you and you will not know they love you. And you will be totally honest. And they are totally honest. But it's state. That's why when David saw Goliath, he came from a state of faith. So he saw victory. His brother were in a state of fear. They saw defeat. David saw Goliath. His brothers saw Goliath. Their response was different based on what? Their state. Even marriage. People that want to divorce, I've seen them meet together and have sex eventually. I'd be like, what just happened just now? And they'd be like, oh no, no, it's okay. But the next day, they move into another state. So one of the things, so the, this is the reason I'm saying so. All of you that, all of us that married, you need to watch your state because if your state begins to grow, you will eventually get to a point it will destroy everything if it's a negative state. And let me say something to all of you that are listening. Let me say all of you listen here. All of you that are frustrated, frustration is a good signal. Frustration is telling you something that you deserve better. You can have more. So instead of seeing the bad side of frustration, why not see what? The good side of frustration. A lot of you are here because we're frustrated about something. Yes or no? Yeah. The truth is that if, you're not for, if the audition was good, you'll not be here. You will have been in Ilashia now for the weekend with him. Away. You'll have been in Ilashia because when you have good relationship, you don't remember church. 
Church is after my boyfriend, but weekend is my boyfriend's own. True or false? For some people, true. So let me what? False. Praise God. Frustration is very powerful because when you're frustrated, when you're frustrated about something, you eventually have the strength to make the changes you want. It's a very powerful strength. That's why if you want to lose weight, if you're not frustrated, you'll never lose weight. You'll only be playing with yourself. But when you're frustrated, you begin to go, you, be, you start, the way you, you start reading, you start looking for people, you start looking for support because there's a vision in your heart. Praise God. So the reason I'm saying so is that this is a big reason. I, I just want to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing because it seems as if you teach you something very simple. It's very simple but also complicated. Once you are in that phase, you need to find a way to tell me the time, you know, so that I can. Once you are in that state of frustration, you will find that the frustration will affect your perspective, will affect your focus, will affect everything you see. You know how I know this as a pastor? Sometimes I come to like right now, a lot of things could have noticed some things that need adjustment in this new venue. But when I come here right now, if I focus on my frustration, guess what I will do? I will preach badly. But not because I don't have the capability to preach well. My frustration will limit my potentials. Even you that think you are beautiful. <clears throat> Can I get some water? Even you that think you're beautiful, your frustration will affect your beauty. Praise God. Have you not seen people that are frustrated and they can't speak English well? And people that are frustrated that begin to stammer? I'm only saying that your frustration reduces your capabilities. So, even your attraction is reduced by your frustration. Alright, praise the Lord. So that's why it's important to deal with it. So today we want to talk about how to deal with it exactly. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 29. This is good. I love it. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 29. And I have um, five questions for you to go home with and think about. Chapter 24 verse 29. Yeah. It says, Say not, I would do say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. Um, verse 30 now, verse 29. Um, chapter 24 verse 30 it says i went by the field of the slothful who is the slothful so the slothful is a lazy man listen to me you can you can be hard working in bit i will explain this now why do celebrities and very rich people marriage crash i'll tell you today this is the reason why slothfulness the reason why is that rich people and celebrities are very strong in business very strong in logic but they don't they're not very strong in emotional capacity they are not very strong in family life and that area falls i was reading i was hearing someone talk about the steve jobs that when he was about to die his biggest regret was i didn't spend time with his kids so i'm only showing you that you can be very strong in one area and very weak in another area even pastors, sometimes there's a pastor that is very, very anointed. When you read God's general, the most anointed pastors had marital problems. Because they were so much in the spirit, they could not relieve their family. So when it says, I went back the field of the slothful. So all of you that are very rich here, you know, I, I thank God that you're very rich. But you must be careful because, you, because especially the men, once you do well at something, you build more strength there. And because you, you don't do what that something else, instead of you to build strength there, you will find yourself withdrawing from that area you're not doing well at. So instead of you working on the marriage or relationship, you find yourself pulling back. Does that make sense to someone here? Who, did you not understand your parents' marriage? This is why celebrities also don't do well in, mar in marriage. Because instead of them 
to go and work on their marriage, they'll be using the affirmations, the fanzin from the fan to be saying that I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I'm a good person. Eventually, their marriage will crash. Glory to God. And the reason why the marriage crashes is because they are slothful. So look at what the Bible says about the slothful. It said, I went by the, the field of the slothful and the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Did you see why the Bible says he's slothful? He's slothful because he lacks understanding. So the guy can do business plan, but cannot tell you what the emotion of a man is or the emotion of a woman is. He says, he, you know, very powerful. So let's keep going now. The Bible says, and lo, it was all grown with ferns and nestles had covered the face. What does that mean? What should not be growing there had began to grow. Instead of you having love, having peace, having grace, what has happened? You're having hatred, having fight. And the reason why is that because you're not carefully working on it. And that's why the best couples work on their marriages. I'm telling you. I never knew this before. It took me a long time to discover this. I thought that they were just a click. Like, I thought they were, you know, it was a matter of the way, perfect click. But when you listen to them, they were, they worked hard at it. They found a way of going on, you know, on time together, on dinners, on lunch. They would fight so that they don't fight. Praise God. They will fight so that what? They don't fight. Okay. So, so the Bible says this, then I considered and saw. So why is this man slothful? I looked upon it and received instruction. And look at what the Bible says. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber. So this is the reason why the man does nothing. He says, he folds his hands and he says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So what happens? This person, about, this person is going through emotional hurt. This person has bad relationship experience and knowledge, bad teaching experience. And he said, what do you do? The person just folds his hand. I can't come and kill myself. Did you see the statement in the Bible? That's the statement. I can't come and kill myself. Well, if, if, if someone breaks up with me, what will, will I kill myself? A little sleep, a little slumber, and a little folding of the hands. Meaning that they understand that in this area, I'm struggling in relationships. So let me say something to you. There's a difference between waiting for marriage and paying for marriage. What you don't want to do is to be waiting for marriage. What you want to do is to be preparing for marriage. So the reason why people, because someone says, what are you doing for? He said, I'm waiting for him. You should not be waiting for him. You should be praying for him. Because when he eventually comes, it's only the people that sees and catches it. Those that wait to wait forever. Because in Matthew 25, the bridegroom eventually came. What happened? The people that were waiting did not have oil in their lamp. The people that were prepared had oil in the lamp. When the opportunity show up, will you have oil in your lamp? But you only have oil in your lamp if you have been preparing. Someone says, how do I know if I'm waiting or preparing? And the reason why you feel so lonely and bored as a single person is this. Because you don't know what you should do while you are single. So if you are waiting, there's nothing to do. You just sit down and wait. But if you are preparing, you know that, oh, I'm working on this. So you are gauging yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. I've gotten better at this. I want to ask single people here. What are you working on right now? Yeah, let's start. Yeah, let me start from anybody here. Give them the microphone here. Okay, let's leave those here. Let's start from, yeah, maybe from the choir. From the choir. Or, or maybe from these ladies here in black. Or the ones behind me. The ones behind me. Are they single? Give her the microphone. Yeah. What are you working on? A good idea is say nothing, Pastor. You know. Um, I'm actually working on my finance. On oh, your finance? Yeah. What are you working on? on being a better person what does that mean i'm a very stubborn person you're very what i'm a very stubborn person you know that and i know that for sure come for I'm a stubborn. hug <laughs> come for a hug that's beautiful the reason why is that you cannot change what you deny and every change starts with self-awareness that is beautiful that's great so tell me Tell me, why do you think you're stubborn? Sometimes when I'm wrong, I don't accept that I'm what? wrong. When I'm wrong, I barely accept the fact that I'm wrong. I always want to be ahead of anybody. Okay. Why do you do that? Sometimes I do it nonchalantly. Why, why do you do that? That's how you do it. Why do you do why do you want to why don't you want to accept your wrong? Why do you want to be ahead of everybody? I don't know, Pastor. You know. You just you just not aware. 
So think about it. The last time you did it, why did you do it? Um, the last time I did, did it was because I just wanted to prove a point. Exactly. <laughs> I knew you knew. Why did you want to prove a point to that person? Because I feel I'm better than that person. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you feel you're better than that person. Okay. Yes. So, why is it important for you to be better than somebody else? Well, well. So, it's very important for you to be better than somebody else. So, why is it important for you to be better than somebody else? Because I see myself differently. I agree that's how you see yes. it. But why is it important for you to be better than someone else? Yeah. Why is it important for me to yes, be to better, be better than, than them? Yes. No, 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 no. It's simple. You know the answer. You know, because you are better than me right now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you, because that, that's what you see. You, because you need to prove you're better than me, so you need to answer the question. Wow. <laughs> are you not better than me? <laughs> so tell me, when you were younger, did, they, did people try to push you down a lot? Microphone. Uh, no. Um, sometimes people actually want to prove a point that. No, no, no. Could... I'm talking about. I'm asking you a question. When you were okay. younger, did, did you have parents, father, mother, siblings that tried to push you down? A yes, lot? I do. Because I'm from a large polygamous home. So it yeah. was always oppression from this side. Your mother's wife, this side. Your father's. It's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So do you see why you need to prove something right now? <sighs> yes. You need to prove because you are trying to tell your parents something. Is your parents you have to prove things for. But the point is that the person you want to date is not your parents. So what has happened is that your past is driving your present and your future. So because when you were growing up, you needed to prove something. Every other person was seen as something. You began to grow that way. So you're not stubborn. That's the negative way of looking at yourself. What happened is that the reason why you always want to get better is that you need, this is what happens to you. You're not stubborn. You protect yourself. You use stubbornness to protect. So you're very protective. And the way you protect yourself is that you don't allow anybody push you down. And the way you don't allow anybody push you down is by having a superior argument. But the question is that, do they really want to push you down? use the microphone that I don't know sometimes. so from when you were young it was put there here that they want to push you down so you're fighting who is not fighting you you know you're fighting don't you think so how do you feel I can hear you Right so let's now. say that so the last guy that liked you that you argue with let's practice conversation <laughs> let's practice it what did you argue about and of course you won I know <laughs> what, what, what caused the argument just one thing just, a, just this, yeah. microphone talking over me talking, what does it mean talking over you it's Give that. an example. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes, because of the time difference, I don't like to. I don't want him to be like, okay, Sarah, you have to wake up and listen to me because I need to talk because I'm understanding to understand that the time difference, you have to go to bed. So when I want to go to bed, you need to understand that. Sarah needs to go to bed, but I have to stay awake because I want to listen to you. And when I need you to listen to me, you're not there because you have to go to work the next day and you don't want to listen to me. So I'm always like, you know what, do whatever you like. Let me go to bed and just send me a message. I'll reply you when I wake up. So it was always like, oh, you don't want to listen. You're talking over me, blah, okay. blah, blah. Great. It's good. You know what I think? I think because people are always trying to push you down. Genuinely, anytime someone cannot meet your need the way you want it, you subconsciously think they're trying to hurt you or pull you down. What, what did you say? 100. Yeah. The question is, is it the people or you? 
microphone. So the thing is that the kind of person you are, you always measure. I do this, you must do this. I do this, you must do this. I do this, you must do this. So when a person does this very well, hey! <laughs> but you know what the Bible says love is? Love is enduring. You know the thing? This is what your relationship will look like. I want to show you what your relationship will look like. Squat a little. Put your hands on my shoulder. Yeah. Try to bend me down. Everybody, we're trying to bend each other. Because once you try to bend me, what do I do? And to survive, I will grab you also. Grab me again, grab me again. So we're trying to. So, so the same way you feel about him, do you notice that the same way he feels about you? Possible. Because he says, you don't listen. I can't do anything. And you also feel he doesn't listen and he's inconsiderate. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, because two of you are bending each other. The power of not having the right state is this. What you do, you will teach the other person and they will do it back to you. Because it's give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. together. Run it over. Shall men give to your bosom. So if I wear you, I will find a way to continually meditate and tell myself, I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to prove I'm better. So the reason why is that you, you need to prove. So you're, you need to prove something. And it's just tiring. Even for you, it's tiring. Is that not true? Don't you get tired? Yes, you I cry do. by yourself a lot, right? Yes, I do. Of course. The reason why is that you're carrying weight you should not carry. Why? They don't, your polygamous family is over. It's a new life. Enjoy. You know what I love about myself, eh? I didn't even try to be a perfect pastor. If you want a perfect pastor, you don't have any churches on this road. Look for them and let them lie to you that they are perfect until you live with them. I'm a work in progress. I accept my humanity and I'm working on it. So to say I'm sorry is very easy for me. I'm sorry, very easy for me. Let me tell you one mistake I made. When our church was about one year old, I was 23 or 24 years. No, 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 I was, no, no, I was maybe 25, something like that. One year old. Our church started here. Thanks, you can. Did I say that? When our church was one year old, I was 23. Our church will be 20 this year. I was 22. <laughs> 20 this year, I was 23. One of our leaders was going to travel to the UK and he needed financial support. The church was one year old, all of us were struggling. We had just bought chairs and he came to tell me that he wanted to travel to the UK and need money. I said, My brother, we don't have money. We we'll use all the money to buy a chair. I met that guy 20 years after this year and the first thing he said to me was this How did you? I was going for school fees. And you say we're trying to raise money to buy a chair. And someone said, but that's the truth. I looked at him and said, I'm sorry. I said, I was 23 years old. I said, I was afraid. I didn't even know if the church would succeed or not. I said, when they contribute money for a chair, now I will remove some money and give to you, hoping that it will come back. But I was so afraid and young. That was the best I could do. And for him, he had carried that in his heart 20 years. You know what I'm saying to yourself? When you're young, you make mistakes. You blow it. When you grow up, forgive yourself and move on. Simple. Some of you have had the divorce here. My brother, my sister, Forgive yourself. Move on. You're a single mother, single father. Okay. Forgive yourself. Move on. The problem is that you will not be trying to prove something to your present and the future. How about something that happened 20 years ago, 25 years ago? Look at this, my wonderful lady. Look at how beautiful, how well spoken she is. Yet the man that loves her that will be calling from the UK, UK or Australia or wherever he's calling from. He said, you know, 
you don't stay awake for my call hey do you know how his schedule is he said i but i stay awake for him because the family where she came from if you keep quiet they ride on you is that not your family they all they match you so now i'm in a relationship i'm bringing that same thing if i keep quiet you know, so i don't keep i'm a voteron you enter it as come and do this is already big deliverance i just pray that you have the grace to do these things i teach you is the grace to what do because hearing it does not hear you help you is doing that. and that's why i go through a whole lot of process saying the same things hoping that you can begin to make gradual adjustments but gradual adjustment will bring gradual results what you need to make is massive change and i want to teach about how to make massive change today massive change today are you here someone say jesus are you getting blessed already yeah thank you i i time up right i can tell oh thank you oh wow i've even seen the timer oh wow jesus christ can i hurry i have five can i just five minutes right oh they've given me a timer five minutes five minutes right what 20 45 oh I, I love you but let me take five minutes don't let me take 45 so that we can come back next week that's next week so how do you change your frustration first of all you need to ask yourself this question what controls your decision two things controls our decision in this world and i'm going to use that to teach two things pain or pleasure every decision you make you are either making it to avoid pain or you are making it to gain pleasure yes or no okay if you have another reason why you make a decision tell me why did you come to church today there's a feeling you will get after you leave church so every decision you make so the scripture we read about the guy that folds his hands you know why he folds his hands procrastinate you, let, let me help you oh, let, oh this is going to be good this is going to be good this is listen to me this is a reason for most people that are relationship frustrated or maritally frustrated this is the reason why the reason why they are that way is that they stay in that state to avoid pain so you will see someone that you know someone that's gone through a divorce and is not engaging again the person can be having sex everywhere but doesn't engage and the reason why they don't is that they stay to avoid pain some of you are here the reason why you're not dating again or you're not actively looking for dating is because you want to what avoid what pain because every every really every decision is based on what is based on fear or what based on pleasure so every time you find yourself not doing something is because the pain is greater than the pleasure think about it let me give you an example you need to lose weight right i need to go to the gym because the pain you know you will get is bigger than the pleasure why did you wake up and pray next level prayer sometimes yeah because the pleasure the what was it uh-huh the pain of waking up is greater than the pleasure of praying is that not true the pain of waking up like ah i will not wake up ah when, when my sleep is sweet it's, it's in the sweetest part of it ah, i will not wake up are you here are you here good and that's why everybody look up here I, I always use weight loss because it's something familiar every time you see people lose drastic weight i, I saw my dad where, where's where's she uh-huh give her the microphone I want to ask her a question. She's a dietitian. She's an expert, one of the best in the country. She's an expert, you know, one of the best nutritionists in the country, dietitian in the country. Thank you, Pastor. Question. I want to ask you a question. When people lose weight, people that really follow through on their diet and lose massive weight, most of them have a crisis. Yes or no? You mean when it's too fast? No, 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 no. When you see people oh, mm -hmm. that eventually lost a lot of weight, they followed the program, lost a lot of weight, most of them had a crisis. Most before of them. Before they came. Before they came, yes. Yes, a lot of times. Yes. Percentage. 
80. When you were talking about that frustration, yeah. a lot of them are in the state of like 90. 90. 80 or 90 I'm only saying to you this way. The reason why you've remained in a frustrated state and you have not changed, you have not found a bigger thing that will change you. And that's what you need to... Because someone says, I need to change. You need to find something bigger. You need to find something bigger. The reason why you hold on to your pain and grief is that you have not found a bigger pain and grief. I'll give an example. A woman lost her husband. The, the woman was just 35. The hus- the, um, um, sorry, the, the man was 35. The woman was 30. And they have two children. The woman was always crying and saying, I will die every day. The day the children started saying that they will kill themselves and die, the woman stopped crying. The reason why is that she found pain greater than her own pain. The reason, listen, the reason why you have not changed is because you have not found pain that is greater than the pain you are going through. When you find pain that is bigger than your grief, you will make the adjustment. That's too, is that too deep? So let me say something to you. You say, I've been broken hearted, I've done this and this and this and this. I'm not dating man, man it again. I'm not getting this again. That's true. The day pain, I'm not sure what pain it will be, hits you. You say, no, 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 I can't do this again. Especially maybe you were saying that and your staff was staying with you, your brother was staying with you, and one day your staff got married, your brother got married, and you are not left by yourself. And one day as you were going, you fell down in the house. There was nobody to carry you. And you say, hey, this is how I can die. Ah, no. What will happen? You will wake up and talk to yourself. So, how do you deal with frustration? So, remember what I said. Everything. So, so we read that scripture that says that the guy folds his hand and does nothing. Why? Because he folds his hands because the pain of doing nothing. And this is why you procrastinate. Because the pain of doing nothing, the pain of action is less than the pleasure of what? Of doing something. So, let's close this. And maybe I can ask some questions. They need, let me please take note of this. No, I said two things. The need to avoid pain is greater than the need for pleasure. You must notice that. So, although, although there's pleasure and there's pain, the need to avoid pain is what? Yeah. Who, who, who has been trying to start a business for three years here? Anybody? Give her the microphone. Let me just ask her. Just ask a question. Give her the microphone. You've been trying to start. So, why have you not started? I was afraid. Yeah. Because what? The pain. The need to avoid pain is greater. We would rather avoid pain than experience pleasure. So the pain is what is keeping her away. Because your pain is connected to fear. So that's one step. So the final step is this. This is the final step. So... If two things drive our decision, which is pain of fear, what do you tie things to? That's where frustration comes from. Everybody look at me. If I lose, if I have a divorce and I feel as if God is teaching me something or I feel as if God is punishing me, would my action be different? Exactly. The thing about frustration is this. What do you connect frustrations to? If you connect it to pain, then you will run away from it. If you connect it to pleasure, you will go for it. Let's talk about some things. When you think of salad, what comes to your head? Pain or pleasure? Say it out. When you think of salad, what comes to your head? Pain or pleasure? Huh? Just echo your answer. When you think of salad, Greek salad, cucumber, no, no dressing, no dressing. Watch this now. So, guess what? If salad is pain, is that not the reason why you never buy it? Because subconsciously, you will be kept away by your mind for making salad-based decisions. What am I saying to you? If relationship is pain to you, is that not the reason why you are single? 
she just collapsed right now <laughs> question what, what is it to you is relationship so let me give you some things and you will tell me what this looks like to you yeah is starting a business pain or pleasure yeah you see the reason why you don't do it because your mind will take you away from anything that you call pain. Is sex outside marriage pain or pleasure? Is sex outside marriage pain or pleasure? You say you don't know. Is sex after my pain or pleasure? Let's be honest. Pleasure, right? Is that not why people do it? Exactly. So, I'm showing you something. Every time, even when you come to church, Father, no, 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 no. I promise this is the last time. You promise, Lord, if I do it, strike, strike, strike me. You people say, strike me. Then, by the next day, Hello, I should come. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I'm not saying for everyone is just like salad is not pain for everyone. You know, you know, I remember when I met my nutritionist, I told her that I had craving in the night. He said, Ah, wow. He said, um, it so she told me that um you need to eat fruit. I said, yes, like grapes. He said, no, not grapes. He said, watermelon. I said, it's not sweet. He said, watermelon is not sweet. It's so juicy. It's so nice. It's so, I said, what kind of what do you, what kind of watermelon do you eat in your family? <laughs> then she just said, okay, if you want to eat food at night, you can eat cucumbers. They're very nice. And I said, cucumbers? <laughs> but the reason why is this, watch this. I'm trying to say something to you. Everything is neutral what you connect and pain and pleasure is your experience and history as you think sex is nice people that were raped here hate sex either in marriage or outside marriage because they had a history of that i'm showing you where frustration comes from what you call frustration is your history repeating itself for you to change what it is you need to change the way you think about it So look at salad. Salad is pain. Sex as a marriage that is destructive is pleasure. Starting the business that will give you money is pain. But spending money is pleasure. Getting business fund to start capital is it pain or pleasure so, can you see that every time you say pain you never experience it because the way god has trained us is this once something is caught pain it will move you away from it so the question is this love and rela relationship either marriage is marriage pain or pleasure Talk to me. Is marriage pain or pleasure? That's good. I love it, what I'm saying. Because that's my next line. Some people, marriage is prison. Who thinks so? Yeah, you think so, right? But you don't want to answer my question. That's why you're looking away. Because answering my question is pain or pleasure. Get by the microphone. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. We have somebody else. Yes, give her the microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Look at me. Say, answering your question is pleasure. Answering your question is pleasure. Exactly. So let's start with that. So, why do you think marriage is bondage?
You don't have to say anything. You can take the microphone for her. Did you read it on her face? That was the torment. Did you see the torment on her face? Because she has spoken, even though she has not spoken. The question is that if you want to be married with that way you think, your mind will be taking you away. Not intentionally, because it wants to help you. That's what it will do. Praise God. So the question is this. This is a question. If you're going to change your marital frustration state, you have to change what you associate with it. And I will use diet again. When I was young, things I didn't need to eat were salads, cucumber, lettuce. I didn't used to eat it. You know, some people loved all those things. I didn't like, I didn't have those gifts. I never used to drink tea. I started drinking tea a few years ago. I never used to drink tea. What I loved was chocolate, soda, ice cream. Those are the things, biscuits. Those are the things I loved. But someone says, but the question is that one last, okay, I think yesterday I had, we're walking here and I had a tiny, like a tiny, like maybe like small amount of Fanta because we're walking here and we're tired. I just said, let me just have some sugar just to keep my body alive. But I cannot drink a whole bottle. Maybe right now, I've not drank a bottle of soda maybe in about three or five, four years, something like that. But what happened is that I began to change the way I saw it. In fact, when I see food right now, the way I think of food is that food is fuel for my body. And I, there can be bad fuel and good fuel. The body will work, but bad fuel will destroy the engine. So that's how I see food. So when I see something, so, you know, I, I opened the fridge yesterday and I saw all of these donuts for my children and I said, ah, nah, bad feel. You know, you know, and I said, let me go to good feel. So I said, good feel. I looked at a piece of salmon and I said, that's what I want to eat. Then even, even, I mean, I used to like very sweet fruits, but now I lean towards healthy fruits. But what made me change was this, and this is how you have permanent change. What I see does not trigger me again because what I associate with them is different. The question is that what do you associate with men, with women, with relationship, with your own marriage, with your husband, with your wife? What do you associate with them? The reason why is that if you associate pain, you will find yourself pulling away. If you associate pleasure, you will find yourself what? Going towards it. Let me give you the questions and we close. First question. What is the pain I associate with relationship and marriage? Write it down. What is the pain I associate with men, women, relationship and marriage? Remember, we're trying to help here. What is the pain I associate with relationship? Let me get one or two question answers here. Yep. Who wants to answer? The guy in cap, do you want to say something with the red cap? You sure? It's too painful to say something. For example, this lady here finds pleasure in taking the microphone. She finds pleasure, yeah? Give, show, show her on the camera. She finds pleasure. Yeah, give her the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> you find pleasure with microphone, Abby. You waste every time. <laughs> Me. But other people find. So I'm only telling you. You see, the microphone is different. No. I said, every experience is neutral. Either it becomes pain or pleasure. It depends on you. Even what seems painful can be neutral. So tell me, yeah. Um, so I associate men with ghosting. You associate men with what? Ghosting. What, what, what do you mean by ghosting? <laughs> what? So, like, they'll just go, they'll just disappear, no communication, they'll just disappear. Good, they just disappear. So, how does that affect you when they come to your life? Um, so, if I'm talking to anybody... You don't put in your heart because they will soon ghost, right? Or if I just notice that you're yeah, absent for a few hours, I'll just block you. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. I'm just showing you. And you, this lady will now say, Tony, you see how that is an abnormal standard? And everybody go, ah! Oh. But... That's how we interpret it. Wow, that's great. You want to say something? Someone at the back? They want to say something? Okay, praise the Lord. 
What pain do you associate with being single? Men, women, love, marriage. It might be marriage, you know. Yeah, what are they? Because there are many people here. What pain do you, what pain do you associate with it? Yeah. Hands up, hands up, hands up in Jesus' name. Raise up your hands, please. Yes, that brother in glasses. Yeah, there's a guy. Yeah. yeah. Would you just stand? Because we, I, I can't see you. I need to see you. Yeah, thanks. Um, in my own communication, I. And lies. So, um, I have this, I have this um, repetitive um, meeting people that like to lie too much. Tell me the kind of lies they tell you. <laughs> Two types. Okay. Um, the most common one on there on 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 this in this Lagos is. <laughs> Leave Lagos, I'm talking about you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one I, I meet all the time. Okay, these are the ones you meet in Lagos. You meet someone yes. else in Lagos. Okay, <laughs> give us Lagos one first. Yeah. Okay, continue. Uh, the, the one of self worth. I always believe My in brother, the... tell me the lie. Don't, don't give me the concept. Um, okay. Um, I had one person I liked so much one particular time. What's the lie? Um, she started with the whole family background. She lied that her family was rich. No. What was the lie? Oh, oh she, um, she told me her family members were dead. Were dead? Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Relax, relax, relax. Have you asked to survive for life before? People, hold on. People lie because they are afraid and they want to protect themselves. Maybe her family is very poor and you come from a richer standard and maybe she's ashamed of her family. You know that you guys feel as if it's nothing. But see, I want to ask you, when you were younger, were you ashamed of your parents at any point? Some people were. How many of you when you were younger were ashamed of your parents? Yep, yep. Look at people. Some were longer, longer. They were ashamed of their parents. I know people. I went to boarding school. I know someone that wants their parents come. You say I'm not around. They will tell them to go and wait somewhere very far. Because you know, when children are children, things that don't matter matter to them. Can you change your parents? Either they are fat or they are big. They are rich or they are poor. How can you change that? So some. I'm not excusing the person, but if I were you and I really love the person, I'd be like. Why are you afraid that you lied to me? Oh, there, then you, we had several, several, like, different lies. kind of lies. Where you are, what you're doing, so how so much you, you are earning. Did you, you just, see? Yeah. All of the life pattern are going towards finance. I want you to notice that. They are going towards finance and life status. So let me tell you, you were, everybody watch this, you were really ahead of this girl financially, yes or no? Yes. Very ahead. She was intimidated. I'm not saying it's right. So she was so intimidated. She, so she's trying to be something she thinks you want. She's trying to think that I need to be this person to hold him. I need to be this person to hold him. So she felt coming with all of these lies. Of course, if she attends a church like Harvester, she would have been having some sense. So, the pain you associate with relationship is deception. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you always, so what happens to you now when you're dating somebody, you're liking somebody? What the, you, you become an FBI agent. No. Okay. Okay. Yes, I, so at this point. You said I'll, no, then you said yes. Which is the answer? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, when I meet someone, I'll, there's no how, your picture will go around my circle. <laughs> No, no, no. My friends, my guys. So, you, you see, let me tell you. Are you seeing how people respond to things differently? You told me the story now. See how I responded. I'm like, oh my God. I feel so bad for her. That why do you need to be someone else to be in love? So, for me, I feel empathy towards her. You, you felt as if deception towards her. And well, that began to affect you. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just the way you are. 
That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Did you see what I said? The way you are going to change what for. So look at this. Give him back the microphone. With this information right now, if you meet a girl like your ex, will you think about her differently and respond differently with what uh, I've said today? Yes, I think I would like to know why. Exactly. You know why you would like to know why? Because for the first time, I've given him a history that of experiences like that are not necessarily deception. They are something else. And that's why we keep saying, if people know better, they will do better. Because it never, you never thought that she was afraid of you and she was ashamed of her background. She was afraid of you and she was trying to hold you by hold means. Did you ever think about that? No. No. You thought she was trying to be who she's not. Yeah, because we talked about it. Yeah, the thing is that no matter what she said, she in her mind says, this guy is ahead of me financially. This guy, I want to hold him by force. And if I'm not this person for this guy, he's going to leave me. Is that not true, ladies? Yeah. All ladies know that. You're the one that doesn't know that. Praise God. Can we close? Praise God. I said praise God. So the, quest, the first question, what pain do you associate singles? And, and, and when you look at that pain, I'm going to ask the next question, what pain do you associate? And this is not the relationship. You can do it to, to diet. What pain do you associate? You, just in case you know, all food tastes the same. The taste you have for food is based on your history. That's why the jollof rice you eat when you give a white guy, the guy say, oh, oh, oh. Why? Because his tongue is not used to pepper. His tongue has taught his history. His tongue has taught data. But if he eats it over some time, he will stop tasting it. One of the food I didn't used to love to eat was oats. But oats is so nice. Do you see something? Oh, do you... it's, it's the way you were raised. So I have my oat without sugar, without honey. I didn't even use sugar or honey. Look, look at that girl. Yes! That's the way to have it. Stand up. Let me see that girl that said so. Let me stand, stand. Stand, stand. Let me see. Okay. Okay. I wanted to see if you were as skinny as the oats. That's what I was asking. You know, if the oats was showing. Praise the Lord. The question is that, is your history that determines? So the question is that, your history gives you evidences that this is what they say. So you, if you want to change it, you must create another history that gives you another type of evidence. Alright. So first question is, what do you link this with? Yeah. Anybody want to tell me something else? What do you link? What pain do you link with relationships? Yeah. Any other person? Yeah. Someone's raising up their hand. There's a lady here. Uh, okay. Oh. If one's raising up their hand, hand very well. Don't give us a uh hand. -huh. Yeah. Give it that. There's a lady. No, look at this lady here. Yeah. Look at the lady right in front of you. Yeah. This is my first time coming here. <laughs> Though I've been following the program online for several months, and I've been promising myself I will come, but I kept on procrastinating. But I thank God, finally I'm here today. <laughs> first yeah. of all, taking this mic, I'm even trying to test, test myself to see so that God me. has taken away my fears. Because mm. this is the first time I'm talking publicly. <laughs> I don't have the privilege to be created like every woman, elder woman being outside there. Because everywhere I go, I felt everybody in the whole world is better than me. 
But while following Avestas online, I kept on having different mindsets about myself. <laughs> and my, to the question pastor has this afternoon, I link my pain to the death of my parents. Your what? My pain to the death of my parents. Okay. My both parents are late and I'm the first child. And I was once married. I have a beautiful daughter of eight years old. So I believe my marriage crashed because my parents were not there. I got married to, a, to the best man, but to the wrong family. Which makes me feel if my parents were there to stand by me, I won't go through all those pain alone. My fear started when I was in school. I'm not lucky to have white teeth like every other woman being out there. So, it's very, it's very terrible for me. Even when I gave birth, I was scared that my daughter should not have the color of my teeth. So, in the process, I went going from one hospital to another. So, I found out that my mom took a lot of church recycling caps too when she was pregnant. That was the cause of my yellow teeth. So, what is your question now? Okay. Because I see you are in pain. So you know the you know the you know the cause you know so the pain you link to marriage is that you will be cheated because your parents are not married. Are not there. Did you hear that? So I felt yeah. right now I don't want to get married because my parents are not there and I don't have anyone that will stand with me. Good. Good. So that's the pain I link to relationship. Thank you. So let me ask you. Do you want to get married? Right now, I can't say yes. Even though I'm having different views now, but I can't say yes. yes. But if I lie to the world, I can never lie to myself. No, no, it's, it's, it's good to be honest. Let me ask you one more question. What did you learn? What did you learn from your last marriage? What good lesson did you learn? The good lesson I learned from my last marriage, I felt, because when I got married... The good lesson? Yes. Felt, because I don't have parents, my in-laws, I took them as mine. The closeness was much. There was no issue at all. So I felt there was a lot of, let me use the word, see finish. And it ended up running my marriage. Is that the marriage. good thing you learned or the bad thing? That was the bad thing. I asked you the And good if thing. I should Are you eventually... noticing the pattern? How she's focused on what is... Did you see that what I'm saying? My sister, let me say something to you. I understand the pain. But the more you focus on the bitterness, the more bitter your life will be. What is the good thing you learned in your marriage? The good thing I learned is... What did you go thing you brought out of your marriage? What I brought out of my marriage, I used to be a Muslim before now. I just converted last year, December. So, even when I was in my marriage, my, man, my mindset and my kind of person is different. I left my marriage two years ago. But my mindset now, the person as in the vision of, the kind of person I'm seeing myself now is entirely different okay. from what I'm, I am when I was in my marriage. What, what, what is if the good thing that's happened my, to you? When right I left now? my marriage, what is the good I didn't thing? have any education. I was an SSC Don't worry. Holder. Don't tell me what is the bad. Okay. Tell me, I now have an education. So, now, after I left my marriage, I was like, okay, there's no marriage, there's What nothing. do you have now? Now, I'm a, I'm a student of University of Lagos. Wow. You know I'm saying this to you? Let me tell you something. Do you love your daughter? Very well. You do? Yeah. If but you're not married... you wish to do. Hold on, hold on. Don't say any buts. Do you love your daughter? Ah, yes, I do. That's something that came out of your marriage. But without your marriage, will you have that daughter? But I'm not treating her right presently. You see the I challenge? She's going to go back. You see that? She's going to go back. I, I understand what I'm saying. But I want to see the frustration. I knew because you can see it in the face. 
every time something good comes up she will find a way to cancel it with something that is bad so you're very unhappy i can tell yes or no yes so the question that do you want to continually be unhappy no so what needs to change for you to be happy my mindset needs to change how will your mindset change that I don't know. But this one, so listen to me. Thank you that you don't know. I want to say your mindset change. Your mindset works with what you focus on. If you keep focusing on the bad things, the bad things, the bad things, your mindset becomes negative. If you focus on the good things, for example, this man that you fell in love with, let's assume his name is Jimo. Because he's a Muslim. There was a time he showed you mad love. Yes or no? Yes. Tell me about it. The person I got married to, it was actually my first love. And we yeah. dated for eight years before we got married. Wonderful. So tell me a time in that marriage or when you were dating that it showed you a lot of love. I was after I gave birth to my daughter. What did he do? Even what my parents cannot do. He stood by me and do everything. How did he stand by you? Okay, he was supposed to go for a an appointment then about two weeks he cancelled it and stayed with me all through and he lost all the money he's supposed to get wow. from the project so hold on he stayed with you he, how did you feel when he did that for you i felt like the most happiest woman in the whole wide world you felt like that what did you what did he say to you what did you say to him during that period i can remember he said since his family is not doing what they are supposed to do and i don't have anyone that is going to make sure he stands with me and do is going to make up for the fact that I don't have anyone. So what did he do for you during that time? Did he bath for you? Did he stay with you on the bed? What did he do? He didn't bath, he didn't bathe for me. What did he do? I'm just asking. What did he do? He was the one that carried out all the He paid uh, the bills for the baby? Yes. What did he do? You're trying to laugh right now, right? It's okay to laugh. What did he do? You can remember. Was there any time you guys went for lunch or dinner together? No. Lunch or dinner? You didn't go for lunch or dinner? No. Was there any time he bought you a present? Or gave you money? In that eight years? When you were dating or you got married? When we were dating? Yes. He gave me money, but present, no. Okay. So he gave, he gave you presents? No. The present, did you like the present? No, you didn't like the present. Present, no, oh, money. Okay, so when you saw the money he sent you, how did you feel? I was happy. What does happy mean? What did you say to him? I said, Thank you. Is that how you said it? Why are you laughing? You know what I'm showing you. If you focus on bitter experience, you become bitter. If you focus on great experience, you become great. She was crying just five minutes ago. All of a sudden, now she's laughing. What changed? We just changed what she was thinking about. My sister, look at me. You came here because you're unhappy and you want to be happy. There's one thing you have to do. Focus on the good things in your life. You'll be very happy. Let me give you a simple assignment. Every night when you want to sleep, have a notebook. Write down five things you are thankful for. When you wake up, look at them and read them. When you want to sleep, write them there again. See, I'm sorry I took your time, but I just wanted to show you because look at her. Look, forgot the camera on her. Look at this. Do you notice she's no longer shaking? She was vibrating. You could feel the tension in her body. You could feel the tension in her body. You could feel the tension. Now she's stable. You could see. Now keep the camera on her. Are you keeping the, Do you see her eyes are open? Initially, her eyes were not open. Because I told you that frustration has a pattern. As soon as she stood up, I could tell she entered the frustration pattern. It was something she entered it. What am I telling you? 
Frustration is a zone. If you enter, you can come out. So, initially, you see as if she was uncontrollable. Are we not here now? Controllable. Tell me how much you love your daughter. What you did for her. The last time you surprised her. How you showed love to her. I love her so much to the extent that what did you do for her? Tell me something you did for her that made you happy. As it is, I'm the one. What did you do? I just okay. you know, tell me one thing you did. Oh, I bought her food. I sat her down. I fed her on her birthday. I sang for her. What did you do? On a, um, I, I'm the one taking care of. No, her. I, I don't want to see what you are doing. Tell okay. me a story. I want a story of something you did. Okay, on her birthday, I took her out. What I did you take her, her to? Her last birthday. Yeah. How I old took was her she? To, she's eight years. What did she wear when you took her? What did you wear for her? I wore a bubble gown for her. Purple gown. Did you buy it or you made it? I bought it. You bought it. Where did you buy the bubble gown? <laughs> I bought it at Ikeja Mall. Ikeja Mall. Did you take her there or you bought it by yourself? I bought it by myself. Did you, did you take a picture when she wore it or you didn't take a picture? I took a picture. Did she look beautiful or not? She's very beautiful. Look at the things to be thankful for. This is, let me tell you, all the things I'm teaching, this is the example. That if you can be in a frustrated state, but what you choose to focus on becomes, look at how she feels now. It's about Delta, she's smiling, you know, you know and, and what did your daughter say when she, when you, when she was, did she say thank you? Thank you, mom, you're the best. And how did you feel when she said that to you? I was very happy. How do you feel right now? I feel good. I feel better. You feel better? The question is this. The question is this. All those things will always happen to you. But you can always change your state by changing your focus. Guess what I said? Change your state by changing your focus. This, this is what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Put on the screen. It said, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are what? Pure. Joy. It says, think of these things. It tells us what to think about. It says, think of these things. The reason why you're frustrated is this. I'm lonely. Nobody will take care of me. Nobody wants to marry me. I'm divorced. And the more you say that to yourself, the more you sink. But if you change your focus and say, I actually have a great life. Look at my work is going so well people care about me. Even though I don't have a boyfriend, people still wish me Valentine. I came to next levels. Pastor B even gave me Valentine. If I had a boyfriend, I would never get that. I would never be there. It was prophetic for me. Look for things to thank for, for in your life. So how do you get better? This is the beginning. This is not the, like your solution. This is the beginning of your solution. Every day, write five things you're grateful for. You will be surprised that everything will change around. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Please, let's close the service. Now, one more question. You know, I had five questions, but let's just do this one. I didn't want to give you more questions. You know, let me see if I can give you one, one question more. Were you blessed already? Those online, I'm trying to make sure we can have a way to do like a live feed and they can, I can zoom in directly. So the second question is this. What is the pain I should, this first question, I wonder if I should, the second question, what pleasure am I missing out of? So if I want to really help, I'm going to ask her, wouldn't you want another child that can say thank you, mommy? Give, give her the microphone. Give her the microphone. Wouldn't you want another child that can jump on your neck I can say that can also be with you and when you are old can take care of you and say thank you. Don't you want another child to do that for you? What? No, no. Is, is it yes or no? Do you want it or do you want it? What? Yes. Yes, you do. Because 
Sometimes the reason why we don't want something that we focus so much on the pain, we forget what we want. All right. Praise God. So you want another child that will take care of you? That on your own birthday, two or three children will gather around and say, Happy birthday, mommy. Happy birthday, mommy. Happy birthday, mommy. Happy birthday, mommy. Then their dad will come behind with his big present and come and, you know. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is that we have what they call mixed association, which is the last I want to talk about. Sometimes you think, so when I think of healthy food, I don't think of them perfectly as healthy food. Sometimes I think of them as bad, like, oh my God. I, I think of sweet food as healthy food sometimes, because sometimes I swing. So some of you are not frustrated, but you just have, sometimes you, you are positive, then you have negative. It's called mixed. So mixed association leads to stagnation in relationships because you are inconsistent. So you take three steps forward two st and five steps backwards. Praise God. Yeah. That's why you don't pray also. You have mixed association. Sometimes you think prayer is good and sometimes you think prayer is a body. Then you are not a prayerful person. Praise God. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Let's stand up and pray.